Mary, meet Coach Nick. Coach Nick, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How's your day been for you so far today? Uh, somewhere between spe spectacular and magnificent. Uh, how about you? Same thing. Same thing. Striving for the best each and every day. It gets a little bit better every day. It As does. I tell my youngest daughter, I like for her to go to bed a little bit smarter every night. That's her challenge. She's a little bit earlier as well, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Larry and I have connected uh, on a number of conversations and just really hit it off. He, he understands success principles, and we've been going back and forth quite a bit, and I figured he'd be a great fit for the podcast. So uh, thank you for joining us, Larry, on this edition of Truth Seekers, and we also want to thank our, our uh, listeners for tuning in and uh, supporting us every week. So thank, thank you to them, and thank you to you, Larry. I appreciate you guys having me on also, too. Thank you as well. Absolutely. We covered so much in the conversations that we've had leading up to this. So maybe we can start off with whatever is top of mind to you right now. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're working on, and then we'll just let this conversation go where it needs to. All right. Um, sounds good. Well, what I'm actually working on now, I actually am a real estate investor. So I'm just dealing with properties, um, buying, selling, also doing a lot of property management on my end also as well. But in the meantime, you still find a lot of people with a lot of issues that you come in contact with on a daily basis. Uh, and I just try to sit there and give the best of me that I can at that point in time, in that moment of time. So I try to take every little moment and maximize it to the fullest as much as possible and try to leave an impact wherever I'm actually sitting at that moment. So when I leave, there's things that should be thought about. Maybe they can contact me later. Maybe we could point them to a right direction going forward. But I'm just trying to see if I can just affect people's life in a positive, more enlightening type of a way going forward. Mm -hmm. I want to take a second to celebrate that because that's a mindset that not everybody has. And I kind of, what I'm hearing you say is just find the little wins in every situation. And if there's something to take away or to practice or to, to put into play to get a win in the future, then you want to take away an action item or a follow-up uh, as well. Am I hearing that correctly? Snowball effect. Absolutely. So yeah, it starts with small little ones. You want to gain some sort of momentum going forward. When the momentum builds up, sometimes confidence and courage also builds up at the same time. And when that starts going a little bit forward, sometimes they can actually pay it forward also as well. Coach, how do you feel about that? We talk all the time about compounded results. So the more that we show up, the more that we execute, the more we can enjoy even more, like even better things that we didn't even, or couldn't even see in the beginning. Find that to be true? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I think also the what you reminded me of there, Larry, is that the the backwards version of it as well, meaning that people, we start the momentum, like just the snowball effect for sure. But if you can look back as well, right, people can see that what they've done before using the same principles, everyone's got a pathway to power. What did you do before that allowed you to be successful? Let's let's take, take that as well and then use that to start off. Like start off with a big snowball. <laughs> Get even bigger. You just start, start off with a big snowball or the big snowball? Yeah. Start with snowball, <laughs> the snowball it's effect. Snowball. But let's start with the biggest snowball we can, right? Like from all oh, the other snowballs crazy. that we've used, we've we've created in the past. But there's always right, right. there's always success that we've had. Like no matter where we are in the journey of our life, or what we're about to attempt, if it's something brand new or it's the next level, or something we've been doing, there's always something we can find from the way that we've done things before that we can do again. And there's definitely things outside of us we can find, but I find it's almost always more powerful to find it from ourselves from fun of the people that you're working with because they know that they've done it because it's really true because it's been them. I believe that you can actually, yes, I believe that you can actually learn something from everyone out here, um, from the people that have experienced a tremendous amount and also from the people that haven't really experienced too much. Um, there's pros and cons to both of those sides. And I try to see what I can actually do in my learning process on a daily basis. I try to go into it like a small little child, just really inquisitive, just, just full of energy, just trying to find out how this whole little operation is actually working, wherever I'm actually at at that point in time. And you meet some real interesting people, especially when you break down the walls of just the business itself and start getting a little bit more personal, relational with them. And you start to find them just leaving a little bit more secrets to their success and different little clues and little, little bitty nuggets that you can actually grab onto and use and apply in your own life so just to be able to find out to go and see how some other people have lived their lives and find out their success and clues that led them to where they're actually going might even be something that i can pick up and utilize myself going forward as well and so true business is all about people first we say that all the time and you know we want sales or we want increased revenue or we want success in our business but that only comes from creating value for people 
and we can't really know how to create value for people until we get to know them. And right. you know, I used this example the other day of think of everybody in your life, you know, maybe outside of your family, but colleagues, uh, friends, uh, coworkers, these people were all strangers at one point in our lives. And some of the people who are closest to us at one point, we never knew them. We didn't, we didn't know anything about them. So you want to talk about the snowball effect. It started with this, you know, that that's maybe one where the big snowball is your adept, um, you know, your personality, the, the, the friends you've made in the past or the way that you navigate talking to people. And then starting with no snowball, you know, just something super tiny is meeting somebody for the first time. And how do you get that rolling is, is having conversations and just getting to know people because people will open up or expose things about themselves when they feel comfortable doing so. You know, you're not going to walk up to a stranger and tell them your life story. Not that you have to tell people your life story to, to earn their business or to make a difference for them, but you, you, the information about people is what really connects people together so that you can know how to provide value for them. You find that to be true, Larry? Yes, you actually made a good point. And I think that when I'm actually going through business, that I found out that once I actually broke down the relationship from the business itself and just really started creating some sort of a relationship, it seemed, it seemed like the business started to flow that much better. Mm -hmm. they, they knew where my agenda was at. They saw that I was there to initially serve them in one way or another. So if I'm actually going from a servant standpoint, I'm trying to make sure that they're smiling at the end of the day. I think me and you had talked about this before. And I would always say that I would actually work for smiles. Everything else after that was just a bonus because money is just a transfer of hands. It's just a, it's a tool, right? It's an instrument that we actually use. So, I mean, the, the main thing is to get to really know people and help to satisfy some of their needs and maybe even, some, I mean, their needs and maybe some of their wants also as well. But I think just building relationships with people and being able to encourage, guide and build up and help each other out in one time actually calls for it in a time of need, such as sorrow, such as death during the pandemic that we actually have now. I think that we can actually just find a better place for ourselves on our daily walk and our daily journey where we're actually trying to go further in life. Mm. Coach, dig me out of this because when I'm getting an image of like a for sale sign out in front of a property and Larry holding up a sign that says, we'll work for smiles. <laughs> <laughs> for smiles, yeah, payment. For, yeah, for sale, payment in smiles. Payment in smiles. Well, it's, it, it doesn't matter what your particular vehicle is that you do that, right? Like yours is is real estate and, and that's just your chosen vehicle because some reason you have some resonance for that or you it was some i don't know why you got into that but you got into it just because but the 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 application of the success in that is with the same thing as the application and success of what we do and i believe in what everyone does and that it's just it's just those baseline principles and so if you go and apply them in different area then that, that's how they'll, they'll work it's just which one which area do you fancy i think about the same with sports as well i think there's value in playing any sport the, the team compartment of it, the the, the physical aspect, the, the mental discipline aspect of it. Which sport? Which one's the best? Like, well, whichever one is that does it for you the most, right? Whichever one that resonates with you the most. If you just your vehicle for accurate, like, actualizing the principles and of success and helping helping people and and getting the value back based on that. And like we say, getting the value back, kind of like. And in other words, if you reap what you will sow, so if you actually plant a good seed towards somebody, then you might be able to get something that's coming from that. Maybe not in reciprocal, but just seeing the fruits of what you have actually planted to those people also as well, which is great joy at the same time, I believe. Yeah. You talked about money being uh, uh, just a tool, right? It's just a transference of value. And and in some circumstances, that comes directly back. In some circumstances, you see it come back in other parts of your life. Right. Where you put something in, you're going to get something out. So put as much in as you can, because then you're going to get more out and you don't know where it's going to come from. And most of the time, what you get out just enables you to give more anyway. So like, just focus on giving more and then you can't help get more and therefore you can give more. And that's how we create, that's the abundance principle, right? More and more. It mm -hmm. creates more and more for us. That's good. Larry, Larry, maybe, do you want to talk about what kind of snowballs you got going on in your professional <laughs> life right now? Like aspirations, where, where do you see yourself in the future? And uh, like, what's going really great right now, if you want to share that? Um, life is actually going really great. Uh, and I say that in regards because there's, there's always problems, right? 
And I always say, just make problems your passion. Try to be uncomfortable or be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? I mean, it's an old cliche that we've used for, for decades now. So I, I think when I have that thought process on a daily basis, it's I'm, I'm looking to put up some sort of a fire, um, whether it's my own or whether it's for some other people that I can actually help to assist in. And I, I really enjoy the part of trying to help other people out um, in, in any way that I really can. It doesn't always work out that way. Just, you know, time at times is just uh, a little tough to, you know, do so many things at once. It, it's really kind of hard to really multitask. But, you know, you try to sit there and get in where you fit in. So I try to on a daily basis see how I can be able to help people, but I can't really help them unless I have some sort of a skill set or some sort of knowledge in certain areas. So I try to ground myself with enough of a, a good foundation and be able to build off of that. So I, I try to do enough reading as I can. I try to get in contact with enough people such as you guys also too. Um, keep a close and uh, night to tight knit circle of, of my influence that will help me out. And there's this one thing that somebody said years ago that always strive to be the the, the dumbest person in the room, so to speak, because mm -hmm. you want to keep everybody else around you smarter. And if you're actually the smartest person in the room, you need to find a new room, right? So yeah. you really don't grow unless you're actually being challenged. So I try to find ways to, to make my to-do list really long the night before, then before I actually have to start the next day. That's, you know, the way I actually go, just start your day and have it finished before you actually begin the day. So with that process, I'm finding ways that I can begin to help people. So reading some books, getting into some other different avenues of business also too, seeing how I can actually be able to try to coach some people in this area or lend a helping hand in this other area, however the case may be, but try to find ways to be able to interact myself with others throughout the day. So mm -hmm. going forward towards that type of a direction. Um, and also with the business, you know, still with the real estate type of a business, still dealing with a lot of issues inside the properties also too. There's, there's always something that's actually happening. So it keeps me busy on the day to day, um, looking to still increase that also as well. And just, you know, I have a few other irons in the fire that I'm, I'm beginning to start growing, especially since uh, the pandemic that we actually are, you know, running on the tail end of right now. So there's been a lot of things going through my mind that I would like to begin to start getting off the ground a little bit stronger than they have been. Um, so it's just to spend a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing, um, a lot of connecting also too, and just trying to find out what really is going to be able to work for me. And as Nick said a little while ago, like we all have our own little position where we're actually at, right? Some people are actually in sports. Um, I know he's an Arnold Schwarzenegger type of a fan. Looks like he's still working out to this day also as well, Nick, right? <laughs> so I used to enjoy that aspect also too. And it's good to be able to, you know, just exercise and be healthy. So then when I can be able to be a help to other people, I always like to call it like fourth quarter strength. Strength, right. So that's when you got the first, second and third quarter, everybody's hot, but they start to dwindle down a little bit with their energy come the fourth quarter. That's when you see a lot of the leaders start to rise above the rest of the people at that point in time. That's where you get your Jordans, you get your Kobe Bryant's and, you know, people in, the, in, in that type of a realm with the mindset, I should actually say. It's a little bit of, you know, the relentless behavior mindset that I kind of try to get myself going forward and little small plug right there. But it, it, I think it's really helpful to begin to have a, a good quality of life as well. So you have some mental clarity. So you can actually think more accurately on the spot if you need be. You gotta sit there and feed your body as much as possible to make sure you have the right amount of fuel for the fourth quarter. You gotta make sure you're feeding your mind with the right proper nutrition also too with reading, coming in contact with other people also as well. So I think with those three things, with the mental, the bodily, and also with the physical, I think it's gonna help out progress throughout the long parts of the day to be able to be able to maximize myself more efficiently in serving others. Did I say that too much too fast? I hope oh, not. Oh, wow. There's, there's so much there. There's so many principles. And it's like, I, I want to remember to talk about that. And then I got to talk about that. <laughs> Just take your pick, right? I guess right. What, what shines through for me is, is your passion for people first. I mean, we talked about that earlier, but... Uh, just your desire to help people but then what is your way to get you into that peak state to to where you can do that and much like an athlete would would need to take care of their body and you know have the right diet and uh, you know practice the right things it's the same for anything else that that we do um, as as coaches as entrepreneurs as whatever we're doing how can we get into our peak state and then you know it's th there's also this balance with all that you have going on giving yourself the grace with, you know, what's, e what's easy for you, what comes easy, what is what is your natural uh, gift and ability that you truly bring value and deliver for people on. And I think sometimes we can get caught up in all the extra cur curricular and, you know, chase this over here and chase that I want to do that I want to do that, especially when we have we want to help everybody. Sometimes it's it, the secret is to stay narrowly focused and really understand where we can make the biggest impact with people and then and focus all of our energy on that. Absolutely. 
you're right. You're completely right. Uh, you just can't wear yourself too thin. You can't put yourself across a whole humongous board of 10 when you can really just try to focus in on the two or three and just give most of your attention right there. So, yeah, I agree with you with that. You actually made a great point right there. You really have to start to find your, your little niche where you focus in at and start to just drive more of your attention on those areas to get maximum effect, to be able to optimize your time and, and also the uh, results at that given point of time. Yes, you're right. Because everybody wins on, right? Because then, then you're not stretching yourself too thin. You can show up for others. And then whoever you are showing up for gets, gets you fully, 100% all of you. And that's where you can make the biggest impact. Very true. Very yeah. true. I love the concept of the fourth, fourth quarter strength. But it's really, really cool. But it stands you out. What's the thing that allows you to go that extra mile? Because like it's, it's not often a, qu a question of capability. Like, can I do it? Well, yeah, most people can if they, if they want to. It's like, are you, are you going to be there and show up, right? It's like, what's that little bit of stretch? Like, what's that little bit more? I always like to think about it in terms of, you know, waking up early, just because it's easy the numbers, right? If you wake up five o'clock and most people wake up at seven o'clock, you got, you got that extra time. You've got 10 hours extra a week, you know, an extra week a month, extra working week a month. And think about that over the years, 15 months over 12 months. And it doesn't actually have to apply like that. But think about that, regardless of your skill set, if you've got three months extra a year than the most other people, the chances are you're going to be at a different level. And then you get the compound effect of that time on top. And you start to start to see the, the, the realize that then then you're in a place where you, you just didn't see from before right you from that position you can see things that you just didn't see before right from that elevation before you just couldn't see that now that there's other things that are available then you just get more motivation for going there i'd love to hear larry because you talked a lot about your process a lot about your day focus on individuals and i love that and you've got many irons in the fire and strategizing and think planning about what's next What's the, if you would share, what's the, the furthest out vision that you have for yourself? Mm. What's the thing that is perhaps even like way bigger than what you're thinking about now? Do you have something like that you could share? Like a, the five-year, 10-year, the, the overall vision, do you have something like that that, that really pulls you, that the biggest version of what that creation is for you? So I, yes, uh, I think my main thing, my main focus that I would like to do is I want to leave a legacy behind for people to be able to utilize going forward. So the value of my legacy is, is it's not going to be the tangible things. I mean, that's the complete things that we will not be able to utilize at all any type of way when we're actually gone. So I would like to leave a legacy of, of, of experience, of the knowledge, of being able to teach some other people going forward on how to conduct themselves in life, how they think they can be able to find their way with a certain type of skill set that you, that pretty much worked for me also. So it, it's, it's the legacy of, of leaving a piece of me behind that, that people may not be able to forget. You know what? I remember that one guy, Larry, he actually told me this. I remember Larry actually showed me how to be able to do this. And something that they kept with him, that really meant a lot to them also too, and be able to get them to push and move forward also as well. But it's, it's also hopefully to be into the effect that it's going to be serving people as well, like being like-minded as myself. I would like them to also be a servant to others going forward, to be able to do the continuation, perpetuate that same cycle of just trying to leave a legacy themselves to somebody else. And so you see what type of an effect that would actually have over the long term. Wow. That's cool. That's really, really cool. And, and it sounds like something, and I find that the best vision thoughts or the, the legacy, as you put it, are, are always work in progress and you know, it's like i've got there's something out there i know what it is I, like what, what what does it really feel like what is it what's the look and feel of it and I, part of the fun is like developing that right it's like it's how is it exciting to continue to develop the the layers of that vision and what that what that feels like but what it actually is how can i grab onto it do i want to grab onto it how can other if people I want to, that's the thing yes right right even do if i if i want to you know, before I actually uh, uh, forget, Nick, also too, you had said something just a couple of seconds ago. And um, when you were making reference in regards to getting up at seven o'clock and then just using 10 hours out of your day, I heard somebody make reference to what you're actually saying. And they just went a little bit further with it. They said, well, we have 24 hours in a day. I mean, whether we need six or nine hours of sleep, whatever the case may be. I know some people that just live off of four. I know me and you, Josh, were actually were talking that you're getting up like 4.30ish in the morning. And I haven't quite hit that moment yet. Um, maybe because I have a little bit later nights, so I might be going to sleep around 12.30, 1.30, sometime around then. But even for the six o'clock hour, getting up then. Um, what about if you decided to, now just listen to me really quick. Like what if you decided to work a little bit longer? Like if you took your eight hour day 
and cut it down to like a seven hour day? Could you actually do that? Or maybe could you cut it down to a six hour day of everything that you do for your work? And then not only do you cut that down by possibly two hours and you're getting up early at six o'clock, but if you took that six o'clock and worked those six hour, eight hour day and just six hours takes you to 12 o'clock in the afternoon from 6 a.m. to 12. And then what if you decided to pick up some other type of skill set, some other job and go from 12 until six? So now you got two work hour days in one day. But then again, if you're really ambitious, right? For you guys, mostly, this is mostly talking to you guys, you're really ambitious. What about if you take another six hours and you go from that, 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 um, that six to 12 at night? So you got three days in one actual day, cutting down the day, uh, cutting down the hours in the actual work day. I mean, it's possible, depending on what you're actually doing, you may be able to, may not be able to, but what if you're able to do that over five days, over 12 months? How many extra work days would you actually have compared to the average eight hour day person? And then not only just that, but when you actually made reference in regards to the hill, seeing that, that, that perspective, and then going to the mountain seeing that perspective, how much different that actually looks, right, Nick? So imagine three days, like how high would you actually be able to see where well, your, your goals are so high, you're actually seeing a lot more at that point in time also, and how much more can you actually get done in that period of time? Not saying that you have to do three hour, uh, three different days in one day, but what if you decide to do that maybe just a couple times a week or in a few times a month? And then how many extra hours would you have throughout that year and how much quicker would you be able to attain the goals that you're actually searching for? Then once you get to those goals, you know the dreams are just going to get bigger and bigger after that, right? So I, I had heard somebody actually put it that was nothing from me. I'm just reiterating what I actually heard from somebody else. And I thought that was a fantastic way to actually put it though. What do you guys think about that? Uh, my immediate reaction is as warning flags all over the place. Like, I guess what I would say to that is, is you, those, those activities better bring you energy, right? If, if those are things that you, you know, get drained from, then you, you'll never survive that. But yeah. uh, as, as long as it's, as it's aligned with like what, what you really want out of life or your pursuits, you know, set it as, as far as you want, but also keep the balance with whatever else you got to balance. Is it family? Is it working out? Like it's this holistic approach to it. I do like the idea of like thinking of it from a strategic approach though. And like, I, I bet, so, so take the single example, make an eight hour day, a six hour day. And you, people are experiencing this in their corporate or, or virtual environments right now. You can get just as much done in that amount of time. Sometimes you don't need eight hours to get your, your day's work done. So I, I like some, some aspects of what you're saying or what that person said but just with some, some awareness of other things that are important, just make sure everything's being prioritized that needs to be prioritized. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and like, yeah, some, some people, right, six, six hour day versus an eight hour day are actually getting more done because they're, 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 they're pulling it together. They're getting their compound interest of the time is what I see so often. Hey, Larry, the, the biggest takeaway I got from that is that, look, baseline, anything's possible. Right. That's the baseline. Anything's possible. Like the, it's, it's, it's a life without limit. The only once you decide that that's the way that you're going to live your life and that's available, once you realize that, then it just becomes, I believe, a question of commitment and priority. Right. Is this opportunity something I actually am committed to? It is. All right, cool. Like, and then it goes to the priority list. What does it fit based on the commitments I've already made? What do I want to put out of the way? Right. Because anything's possible. Anything. It's like these are the most important things. These are three things. I'm going to strip everything out of my life. And it's, and it's absolutely non-negotiable. It's a must for me to accomplish these three things in six months. Yeah, I'm going to work 18 hours a day in three different areas, work, sleep six hours, and I'm going to crush it for six months. Mm -hmm. I'm basically going to get a five-year lift in six months, and I'll be a completely different place, and it's worth it for me because after that, it means this. Right. Completely get it. Like, absolutely. But to Josh's point, everything's a balance. Yeah. And, balance. and the difference between doing that with, your, with, it, with intention versus just going – Okay, let's just do this. <laughs> it's, like it's, a, it's a completely different place. Yeah, it's anything's possible. Yeah, it, but the thing is, it, it's not saying like, now th this is just going back to what you were saying. So I was just bumping off of that in regards to 10 hour day yeah. and, and that. Now, it's not for everybody. I, I get sure. that. I, maybe I should have backed up a little further and said it's not yeah. right because no, it's not. <laughs> you got kids into the into the realm. You got other significant others. I mean, there's going to be you know just if you, your regular work if you can or cannot pull away in that certain amount of time, whether you actually finish the work or not. So yes, you have huge variables. But more or less, I guess I'm speaking from an entrepreneurial aspect because already when you're doing entrepreneurial type stuff, you're you're kind of like cut from a different cloth already as it is a little bit anyways. 
um, you're seeing things differently. You, you're, you're trying to get, not really be a boss, but more so of a leader. Um, you, you've tried a lot of different things. You're a risk taker to certain degrees. You, you're not really trying to be super comfortable just right where you're at. You're trying to go outside the box from where you're actually at. So there's a whole another slew, another direction we could have went with that, but that was just a quick end of it. But I agree with you. There has to be some balance. I mean, it's not like you can do something that, from the time you're 40 and do it all the way to you're 65. Like, absolutely not. You got to find some sort of advance. You guys are completely correct on that. Yes. Mm. I just wanted to make sure I was clear with that. It's not. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're not crazy. You're not crazy. No, okay, I think thanks. I think Nick Nick summed it up, and, and you just brought it home there with um, you know, the the idea is that anything is possible, and and maybe as we begin to wrap up here, I can I can share my takeaway from our conversation today. I'd love to hear you guys as well, but um, the legacy part because that implies thinking of the big picture, and I think when we're very clear on what that looks like we can we can be at peace with knowing our daily activities are aligned or not aligned and maybe need to be adjusted with with that vision of the future and one thing i've learned you know the older that i get that the future is coming you know i'm i guess as a college student or just out of college i never really thought of what i would be doing in my 30s or heaven forbid 40s 50s but you know barring any tragedy that happens i'm going to get there I'm, i'll be a 40 year old i'll be a 50 year old so what can I spend my time doing now that would just be a monumental increase or improvement on what my life would be like then? And that, uh, that vision does involve other people, bringing other people up around me, but also being the best version of myself. So that legacy part really stuck with me. Um, maybe Larry, share, share something that you're taking away from this conversation, if you could. I think just in regards to how we're actually going forward with, with just what we even touching on, on the legacy itself. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, just the thought uh, of you actually appreciating that in itself because it just, when I get to talk to certain other people, they really don't see the legacy part on their, their own also at home. They, they're not mm -hmm. quite thinking on just like a, a more or less of, of what I can actually leave to them intellectually, um, you know, for for them to actually pass on to other people. It's more of like a 401k where you got some property, we have some vehicles, we have some some trusts or, or a uh, some sort of an estate that we're actually going to leave to everybody, you know, after we actually pass. And I, I just want to have something a little bit more fruitful, a little bit more valuable going forward with being able to pass it on to somebody and then be able to pass that back down again. But I, I believe this conversation actually has helped me to to see a few things a little bit differently though. Um, and I think some that we didn't really get a chance to touch on was also just like the motivating drive. And I think you and I had spoke on it a little bit before in the past though, Josh, um, in regards to like, what is like our purpose? Like what really motivates us to do what we want to do? So I think with the beginning of that, helping out with those three, uh, uh, six hour uh, increments in our one day, along with getting to the very end of, of leaving some sort of a legacy for our kids and also grandkids or whoever could we come in contact with that we really hold dearly to our hearts. I think that part is really going to be the most important part, but just finding out the very beginning of the game, like where we actually are standing at, like what is really driving me? Like what, if I'm a servant, like what type of service am I trying to put, you know, provide for other people also too? Um, and like, what is really going to get me going on that day to day to be able to get out of bed early in the morning, to be able to have me go through my day without having tons of coffee to be able to push me just because it's the energy inside me of the will and the drive inside me that really wants to promote me to go forward and say like, you know what? This is, this is what I really enjoy about life. Like, this is my purpose here in life. This is why I'm actually here today, this point, this, uh, uh, this hour in the second in my day. Love it. Yeah, I had to pump a fist while you were speaking there. I hope that's okay. Sure. I saw it. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Coach, bring us home if you could. You actually touched on what my takeaway was going to be there, Larry. Probably if what Josh shared was probably what prompted that thought in your mind, perhaps. It's just a reminder for me today that we've got to play the game at the both sides or both ends. What I mean by that is that you've got to, because we started talking about like what you enjoy in the day. And we start and then we we brought it back around to why are we doing any of this in the first place, which is that legacy, which is the end game, which is the result we're looking for, ultimate result. But that's what both ends of those it's like this is what I want the most. You don't want to drag yourself to that. You don't want to be miserable while you're getting there and then get to your deathbed and go, I did it, dead. You want to you want to enjoy it, you want to fall, fall in love with the process, but you want to make sure that you're going towards something that's really most important. I think keeping an eye on both of those things. As you go through, our, your life is so important. That's the continuous drive. Like, why am I doing it? Keep it associated. And maybe it's not all the time the ultimate vision, but what's the next part of it, which is the milestone, which, which allows you to be on the right path 
know you're in the right place for the ultimate vision. That they're, they're the reasons I believe that we get our drive from. The more reasons you can associate yourself with that outcome that drive the ultimate vision, the easier it's going to be to get out of bed. And if you're focusing on in the moment, once you're out of bed, to fall in love with the process of it, make enjoy the hell out of your day, then you won. Mm. Awesome. Good stuff. Gentlemen, excellent conversation today. Quick plug for the, the podcast. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and also our YouTube channel, uh, Truth Seekers with Josh and Nick. Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, a riveting, awesome conversation. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Nick.